And our scripture reading today is in Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. Then we'll be alluding to this, this entire chapter. But Mark chapter 11, 1 and 2 says, When they came nigh to Jerusalem, unto Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent forth two of his disciples. He saith unto them, Go your way into a village over against you, and as soon as you be entered into it, you'll find this coat tied, whereon never a man sat. Loose him and bring him. Loose him and bring him. Let's pray. Jesus, I love you. And Holy Spirit, deal with hearts. Unless you deal with hearts, my words, my sermon's really not going to matter. So Holy Spirit, would you take precedence in this service? Just as Spurgeon of old said, I believe in you. I do, God. And I know how helpless I am without the Holy Spirit. So bind any distractions, work, bring glory to yourself. And for all you do, we're going to praise you. For I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to talk to you about lessons from the donkey on Palm Sunday. Lessons from the donkey on Palm Sunday. Now, for the first time in my life, about a month ago, I, I, I did a Caribbean cruise. I had, I had never done that. I had uh, I'd never been in the Caribbean, and it was a neat experience to see the most beautiful water. You know, I'd taken a, trips. I'd taken uh, spiritual pilgrimages to places like Greece and uh, Israel and other places, but, but I'd never seen water more beautiful than I saw there in the Caribbean. And they told me, they said, you'll be preaching on the ship, but they said, we'll be porting some places. And the brother that was traveling, he and his wife with Barbara and I, he said, Pastor Benny, we're going to be porting at this place called Turks and Caicos, Turks and Caicos. And he said, when we get off, I just want you to know I've got us a golf cart because we're going to be riding around and we're going to be seeing some things there at Turks and Caicos. So as we, we got off and we got off the golf cart, I noticed something that surprised me. There in the, in the wild, folks, in the wild, there was all kinds of donkeys. I mean, here a donkey, there a donkey, everywhere a donkey. I mean, just donkeys. Just, just, just donkeys everywhere. And this is not an exaggeration. I, I, I said to the br brother driving the golf cart, I said, let me, let's stop. And he said, why do you want to stop? I said, I just thought it'd be neat to pet the donkey. You know, I just thought it'd be neat to, 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 to be here with a donkey. That's a lot of money to pay for that anyway. But anyway, I mean, do donkeys were everywhere. And I started thinking about why all these donkeys? Why, why all these donkeys? And my research showed me that in the 1700s, they mined the salt there. And they had salt plantations. And they would use the donkeys to, to haul the salt. But the mining of salt ceased to exist there. But you still had the donkeys. And the, the donkeys were reproducing. So when I started thinking about those donkeys, I, I, I started researching donkeys. And I, and I don't know if you realize this, folks. They're really smart animals. They learn and have the problem-solving ability of a dolphin or a dog. They learn and have the problem-solving ability of a donkey or a dog. Now, that's not a bulldog, but they, they're a dog. <laughs> Literally, they, 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 they preserve their lives from predators. Let me explain how they preserve their lives from predators. They sleep many times standing up. And that way they can be aware of predators when they're coming against them. They're, 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 they have those big ears. And it's not just they have those big ears. They have great hearing. So when you walk up to the donkey, they literally can, can hear your heartbeat. They bray. And their bray can be heard for 60 miles. They would bray to another donkey 60 miles in the distance to let that donkey coming know that there's predators in the area. Now, they form friendships. 
If two donkeys are working together and one donkey dies, if they've worked together a long time, the other donkey will literally go into a deep depression because he's been separated from his friend. He's been separated from the other donkey. Now, now here's what was interesting to me. The story that we're going to study today, that we're going to study today, if you study the Gospels, the three synoptic Gospels wrote about it. Luke 19, Matthew 21, John chapter 12, and here in Mark chapter 11. All of them wrote about this. When I get to heaven, I, I think I may want to do this. What was interesting, only one of the writers, John, wrote about the palms. He wrote about them waving the palms. But all four of the writers wrote about the donkey. All four of them, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, wrote about the donkey. And what I've thought about asking the Lord, God, why is it not Donkey Sunday? <laughs> why is it Palm Sunday? It would make sense it's Donkey Sunday because all riders rode about the donkey. Now here's what I want you to see. If all of them wrote about this donkey, God wanted us to see some things about this animal. And there's four or five things I want you to see about this donkey. The first thing I want you to see about this donkey today is the fact he was bound. Chapter 11, verse 2 says this donkey was tied. This donkey was bound. See, I believe this donkey is a picture of you and me. Because Proverbs 5 and 22 talks about the cords of sin. And Acts 8 and 23 talks about the bonds of iniquity. This donkey was bound. Here's what I know. The children of Israel were just that. They were the children of Israel. But they were in Egyptian bondage. They were the children of God, but they were in bondage. Many people, they're Christians, but they're bound. They're bound by guilt. They're bound by anger. They're bound by unforgiveness. They're bound by vices. They're bound by addiction. They're bound by greed. They're, they're a Christian, but yet they're bound. They're bound by discouragement. They're bound by public opinion. They're bound by alcoholism. They're bound by lust. They're bound by pornography. They've known the Lord, but they're bound. You say, preacher, what's the answer? The answer is John 8 and 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Somebody said the truth sets you free. No, it doesn't, ladies and gentlemen. It's your knowledge of the truth that sets you free. It's when you apply that truth to your life. It's when you apply the principles of the Word of God to your life because the principles that you live by will determine the world that you live in. It's when you apply the truth of the Word of God. But let me tell you something. According to John 8 and 36, if the Son has set you free, you are free indeed. Indeed. Here's, what, here, here's what I know about this donkey. He was bound, but can I tell you something else? 
he was found. <laughs> Look what verse four says. And they went their way and they found the coat tied by the door. You know, many times I hear people say this, I'm so glad <laughs> that I found the Lord. But I want you to know something, folks. He wasn't lost. <laughs> I, I want you to know something. He wasn't lost. You didn't find the Lord. He found you. <laughs> you didn't find the Lord. He found you. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 53, verse 6, we all like sheep have gone astray. But I've got good news. He came looking for you and for me. He came looking for you and for me. He went into that garden. Adam had sinned. He said, Adam, where art thou? Why, God's omniscient. He knew exactly where Adam was. He knew where Adam was, but he wanted Adam to know where Adam was. And that's why he said, Adam, where art thou? God came looking for him. And folks, God came looking for you and me. And I noticed something. I noticed something. In verse 11, it says, God sent. <laughs> I mean, in chapter 11, verse 1, it says, and God sent two of his disciples. <laughs> and God sent two of his disciples. You know what God does? God puts people in our paths to get our attention, to reach us for Jesus Christ. <laughs> he sends people. <laughs> See, folks, that, 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 that donkey was bound, but he was found because God sent people looking for him. I remember when I was lost, just as lost as last year's Easter egg, that bus, school bus that I rode on, it let the last person off on the mountain, and then it would go down into the valley, down into Hubbard's Cove. And I had a bus driver by the name of Joni Hobbs, and he would talk to me all the way. Benny, God loves you. Benny, God loves you so much, and God sent his son to die for you. God sent a bus driver to speak to my heart. And when my mother and I was selling whiskey illegally out our back door, there was a preacher that would stop by by the name of Clayton Jones. And Clayton Jones knew the whole time what we was doing, but he would say, I'd love to have you this Easter in church. I'd love to have you this Easter in church. I had a man by the name of Jim McKinnon who would reach out to me and say, Biddy, I'd love it if you would come to church. Oh, I'll tell you something. What was God doing? He was sending somebody for this donkey. He was sending somebody for this donkey. He was sending somebody for this donkey. Here's what I know about this donkey. I know he's a picture of you and me because he was bound. I know he's a picture of you and me because he was found, but I'll tell you something else. I know he's a picture of you and me <laughs> because he was turned around. <laughs> oh, goodness. I believe if a mosquito would bite me right now, it would leave singing there's power in the blood. I mean, he was, he, 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 was, he was turned around. You said, preacher, what are you talking about? Well, you got to understand, folks. There wasn't just one donkey. Read your Bible real close. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, they were come to Bethpage unto the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village over against you and straightway you shall find the ass tied. That's mama. And a coat with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. A, a coat was a male that was four years or younger. So you got to understand, there wasn't just one donkey, there was two donkeys. And you got to understand something. Jesus would have ridden this donkey because the Bible says he actually 
rode the coat. Now, I don't know if you know this, but I've done my research. Donkeys are more difficult to break than horses. This week, I knew I was going to be preaching this. And I said to my team, I said, find somebody that's got a donkey. They said, why? I said, I want to ride it. <laughs> so I got there. And that donkey's name was Lucy. And look, I was excited about riding Lucy, but Lucy wasn't excited about me riding her. Now, here's what I know about the donkey that Jesus got on. It had never been ridden. It was just as wild as a buck. Keep in mind, it had never been ridden. But when Jesus sat on it, <laughs> you said, oh, no, no. When, when, when Jesus sat on it, everything was fine. You say, but Brother Benny, uh, uh, oh, he's just as wild and she's just as wild. Oh, but she hadn't met Jesus, amen? She hadn't met Jesus. She hadn't met Jesus because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Get this. He said, you're going to find that donkey at a place, if you go to the verse, at a place where two ways met. See, let me tell you something, folks. I tried it my way. <laughs> I did it with my plan. I did it with my desires. I did it with my own thinking. I did it with what I thought was the best. I, I, I was planning to do everything my way. We're going to do this my way. I'm going to live my way. I'm going to walk my way. I'm going to do my way. I was going to do it my way. But there was only one problem. The Bible says in Proverbs 14 and 20, there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. I decided I was going to do it my way, but I didn't realize there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. I was trying it my way, but I thank God for the place where two ways met. I thank God for the day that my way met his way, and his way was a better way. Oh, oh, yes, I found a better way, broader path for my feet. My heart rejoiced so sweet, I found a better way. Look here. I'm sorry. He was bound. He was found. He was turned around. But his reason for existence now abounds. She said, that's not good rhyming. That's the best I could do. <laughs> so you got to understand. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus rode this donkey into Jerusalem. This is the beginning of Holy Week. Tomorrow, I begin a series every day. I'll tell you what happened. You want to watch it. Every day, I'm going to tell you. What he did on Monday, what he did on Tuesday, what he did on Wednesday, what he did on Thursday, what he did on Friday. She said, just go online every day. But he goes into Jerusalem. First day, he's riding a donkey. Get this, folks. It's the first step to him going to the cross. It's the first step to him going to the cross. What was the donkey about? The donkey was to take him to the cross. It's believed by most theologians that the donkey that Jesus would have ridden had a black stripe across its back and black down its mane. It literally would have had a cross 
on its back. Jesus said, now you listen closely to those two disciples. He said, you go in there and you get this donkey. And when they ask you, why do you need him? You tell them this, the Lord has need of him. You listen closely. The Lord has need of you. We're that donkey. The Lord has need of you. The Lord has need of you. Why, preacher Benny, does the Lord have need of me to take people to the cross? Why are we on this earth to know him and to make him known? You say, I don't know why I'm here. Well, come up real close. I'm going to tell you. You're here to know him and to make him known. You're here to take people to the cross. Now, some of you are listening to me right now, and you're thinking, I'm not qualified, Pastor Benny. Well, can I tell you about the first person who told somebody about Easter? <laughs> she was from Magdala. Magdala was known for prostitution. In all likelihood, she was a prostitute. But I can't say emphatically she was a prostitute, but I can say emphatically she had seven demons cast out of her. And her name was Mary Magdalene. And she was the very first person to tell somebody about Easter. She was the very first person to tell somebody that Jesus had risen from the grave. 82% of people who come to church, they don't come from a billboard. 82% come because somebody personally invited them. 82% come because somebody personally invited them. Lee Strobel said one day I left work and he said, the Lord said to me, you need to invite your coworker to Easter services. And, and let me clarify something, folks. You said, Brother Benny, you said the Lord. Does God say, hey, Benny, <laughs> I need to tell you something. Never has happened. But when he speaks to me, it just won't go away. Amen. I just know I'm supposed to do it. You just know I'm supposed to do it. <laughs> Buy that guy's lunch, Lord. You know I don't even like him. <laughs> but you just know you're supposed to do it. And the Lord spoke to Lee and said, you go back. And Lee said, I told the Lord as if God didn't know. I said, God, he's an atheist. He don't even believe in you. He said, go back. And he said, I went back to work and I walked into his office and I invited him to Easter services. He said, I not only invited the man to Easter services, but he said, I told him what the resurrection was about, about Jesus uh, arising from the grave and how our sins could be purged. He said, I told him everything. And he said, he wasn't in no way interested. He blew me off. And Lee said, I walked out of there. And I got in my vehicle, and he said, I started going home, and I told the Lord. He said, I said to God, God, I told you it's a waste of time. He said, four years later, I was in a service. And he said, a man walked up. And he said, sir, you don't know me, Mr. Strobel. And he said, no, I don't know you. But he said, you're responsible for me becoming a Christian. He said, I'm responsible for you becoming a Christian. He said, how would I be responsible for becoming a Christian? He said, well... Four years ago, I was in an office and you invited my coworker and I was listed. <laughs> and I picked up the phone and I said to my wife, honey, are you sitting down? She said, yes. He said, I'm glad because we're going to church Sunday. She said, I, ca I can't believe this. He said, yeah, we're going. And tell our son to get ready. He's going too. And he said, we all three went to church on Easter Sunday. And we gave our lives to Jesus Christ. And we've never, ever been the same. 
Folks, what we're, we're here to know him and to make him known. We're here to know him and to make him known. All of us are. Yeah. We're just here to know him and make him known. Now, let me go back. He was bound. <laughs> he was found. He was turned around. His reason for existence now abounds. And look, he received a lesson <laughs> that was profound. <laughs> Normally, when a king would conquer another nation, they would do a victory parade, and he would ride in on a white stallion. A white stallion. Now, let me say something. One day, Jesus is. <laughs> One day, according to Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. <laughs> One day he's gonna. One day he's gonna ride that white stallion. Amen. He, he, the, he, here, here's gonna be Jesus one day. So the, look. You know what that's gonna be? Air Horse One. Amen. I mean, he's coming back on Air Horse One. <laughs> but wait. Here, when he rode in Jerusalem, his feet probably drug the ground. They could have drugged the ground because he was just on a little coat. It was a picture of humility. In, in, in Mark chapter 11, I read verse 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And they all spoke of the donkey. But when Jesus sat on him, you didn't hear any more about the donkey. <laughs> it was all about Jesus. It was all about Jesus. <laughs> I've often thought about the next day when that donkey walked into town. And they wasn't saying Hosea in the highest. They wasn't waving those palm branches. They wasn't doing all that praising. I bet that little old donkey went back to mom and said, Mama, what's going on? And she said, oh, baby. You're just a donkey without him. You're just an ordinary donkey without him. He's the one that makes all the difference. He's the one that's to be praised. He's the one that's to be exalted. He's the one that's going to be lifted up. See, folks, listen to me closely. Look here. The Bible says humble yourselves. But it never says pray to be humble. Never says pray to be humble. I don't believe humility has really got through prayer. I believe humility has got through praise. I think humility has got through praise. You remember what they started doing? They started waving these palm branches and they were shouting and they were hollering. And look, some people got upset. Why is this going on? Why can't we just go to church without Brother Benny yelling at us? Why can't we just have calm services? Because this is a church and not a funeral home. Now, now wait. And Jesus said to him, you got to understand something. If these people don't praise me, the rocks will cry out. If these people don't praise, it was right here where Jesus said that. If these people don't praise me, the rocks will cry out. Now, I'm almost done. I'm almost done, but I, I promise I'm almost done. But folks, let me tell you, there's a lesson that's profound, and that lesson that's profound is Jesus deserves all the glory. Jesus deserves all the honor. Not a person, not a denomination, not a personality, not anything, not, not, a, not a group, not a church, not a title. Jesus deserves all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. 
You say, well, wait, preacher. I, I don't, I don't know about, I, I'm, I'm not really, I don't really know that I understand praise. Well, let me tell you. You know why you ought to praise him? You ought to praise him for who he is. <laughs> I, I, I wish I could sing. <laughs> if I could right now, I would sing, I am peace, I am joy, I am rest, I am your comfort and relief from your stress. I am strength, I am faith, I am love, I am power, I am your freedom this very hour. <laughs> Folks, let me tell you something. We ought to praise the Lord for who he is. <laughs> He's the master of the mighty. He's the captain of conquerors. He's the head of heroes. He's the leader of legislators. He's the overseer of overcomers. He's the governor of governors. He's the prince of princes. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. We ought to just praise him. Can we do that? We ought to not just praise him for who he is. We ought to praise him for what he said. I wonder how many of you have ever been betrayed. I wonder how many have ever been forsaken. I wonder how many times if you thought you'd been so good to somebody, but yet they broke your heart, <laughs> turned their back on you. Put a danger in your back, dagger in your back. Wonder how many times. But I love what he said. He said, I will never leave you and I'll never forsake you. That man may have walked out, but he'll never walk out. That woman may have walked out, but he'll never. Oh, folks, can we just praise him for what he said? I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Wait. Third, why don't we just praise him for what he did for us? What did he do for us? Well, Romans 8 and 32 says, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Can't we just praise him that I owed a debt I couldn't pay? He paid a debt that he didn't owe. Can we just praise him for what he did for us? Folks, we ought to praise him for what he continues to do. <laughs> well, what's he doing? Here's what he's doing. Romans 8 and 28 says, he's working all things for our good. You said, Pastor Benny, I didn't get a good medical report. Pastor Benny, I didn't get the job. Pastor Benny, the situation didn't work out. But let me tell you something. God said, I'm gonna take what seems so bad in your life and I'm gonna work it for good. I'm gonna take what seems so bad and I'm gonna work it. Folks, that's reason enough right there to praise the Lord. Wait, and I'm done. One more. We ought to praise him for what he's going to do. He looked at the disciples one time and he said, guys, don't let your heart be troubled. <laughs> you believe in God, believe also in me. <laughs> you believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. <laughs> I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place, I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Can we just praise him one more time? <laughs> Let's stand to our feet. With every head bowed and every eye closed. That donkey was bound. That donkey's you and me. But that donkey was found because God came for that donkey. Friend, today you say, Pastor, I'm bound. I don't have the assurance that if I died, I'd go to heaven. I don't know that my heart's right with Christ. I don't know, preacher, that my heart's right with Christ. 
Brother Benny, I know you won't call my name or embarrass me. I promise you, I give you my word, I will not. I give you my word, I will not. But preacher Benny, I don't know that if I died, I'd go to heaven. And I just want you to pray for me. I want you to pray for me, Pastor, because I don't know that my heart's right with God. Nobody's looking. If you'd like for me to pray for you, hold your hand up real high where I can see it. Just slip it up and write it down. Pastor, pray for me. I don't know that I'm right with God. God bless you. Pastor, I don't know that I'm right with God. Please pray for me. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm waiting on your hand. God bless you. I'm waiting on your hand today. I don't know that I'm right with God. I believe there's other hands. I see that hand. I'm waiting on your hand today. Pastor, pray for me because I don't know that I'm right with God. I'm waiting on your hand to go up. God dealt with your heart today. Just slip your hand up and say, pray for me, Pastor. Well, now listen closely. I see your hand in the back. If you raised your hand, repeat this prayer with me, meaning it with all of your heart. Pray this prayer, meaning it with all of your heart. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. But God, I'm sorry for my sin. I'm so sorry I want to change. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. And I confess them to you right now. Come into my heart, Lord. Come into my life. And forgive me. Now, God, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you, God, that I'm right with you because of Jesus Christ. Thank you for saving me. If you prayed that prayer with me, hold your hand up real high where I can see it. Hold it up real high. That's it. That's it. That's it, sir. Hold it up real high where I can see it. That's it. Just real high, just slip it up. I prayed it with you, preacher. I see that. I prayed it with you, preacher. Just slip your hand up right over here. Yes, brother. Yes, brother. I, I prayed it with you, preacher. I prayed it with you. I wonder how many would say, Pastor, the message today was for me. Pray for me. And you'd hold your hand up real high. Hands up all over. Hands up all over. We're here to know him and to make him known.